My name is Thomas Sander. I'm the Data Protection Officer and the Director for Data Privacy for Intertrust Technologies. And I'm also a senior research scientist in the area of uh, security and privacy research. Whenever a company is processing data that is from Europeans, this processing post uh, May 25th when GDPR goes into effect has to be compliant with the GDPR requirements. So, and that affects many US companies and many Japanese companies, of course, that offer goods and services in Europe. One of the things that is going to happen that a lot of companies are recognizing that it is very costly to have two different privacy regimes where they treat European data um, according to GDPR requirements, treating it one way, and then another privacy regime that they apply, for example, to American data. So one of the effects that it's having is that many companies choose to apply GDPR requirements, at least broadly, perhaps not in every detail, but broadly to all the personal data they have, even to people who are not, who are not uh, from Europe. I think it is about accountable privacy management on the one hand, that is part of GDPR, which is going to determine the discourse in privacy for a number of years to come. Another thing I think the future of privacy is going to be that technology is going to be widely used so much more widely used than it was before. Technology that people in the academic community and in the engineering community have known about for a long time and have created, but so far the incentives weren't high enough to use these technologies. That the GDPR has a requirement of privacy by design actually means now a lot of these technologies will actually be used in real products and users will enjoy um, the protections that are provided through them. Yes, so traditionally people would think of personal data as name, home address, email, phone number, and so on. So data that directly identify an individual. The GDPR has broadened that the definition of personal data considerably. It now also includes online identifiers and pseudonymous data. They also need to be processed according to the rules of the GDPR. Many and many products may now fall under uh, GDPR and may be covered that previously were not. So for example, if your product produces online identifiers or um, user identifiers and uses them, even if they're pseudonyms, you have to at least consider if they might be personal data under GDPR and then treat them accordingly. So it brings a lot of data under the purview of data protection law. So privacy by design is relatively I wouldn't say easy, but at least well-defined if you have a traditional waterfall development model, software development model, where you have a requirement and a design phase where uh, you can apply a privacy review, and then accordingly you can identify privacy risk and then mitigate this risk through certain measures and then develop accordingly. In agile development, that is going to be different because um, the product functionality changes incrementally and it changes in short sprints. That makes it incredibly hard to have such an external review process for the product development for privacy. So one of the things that one can do now or that one needs to do is, and several people have proposed this also from the um, software engineering community and the security community, is to actually have individuals embedded within the Agile teams that are privacy experts themselves, that have been trained up to be privacy experts, so that they can, in the uh, short sprint cycles and so on, they can do these privacy reviews and flag up potential risks and also apply good privacy engineering practices to the development. In GDPR, I think there's also the right of an explanation. So if, um, if an algorithm comes up with certain results, you have a right to ask why the algorithm came up with that result. And that's, of course, hard to do for some sophisticated machine learning algorithms.